Okay guys, welcome to part six of building RC model aircraft out of foam using the sectioned foam fuselage technique and hot wire cut foam wings. This time we're going to uh, take the fuselage formers one step further and we'll do the, uh, the final shaping on them. And here in just a moment I'm going to, uh, to show you what the inside of the uh, little P-47 that's hanging here behind me looks like and we'll show you what we're going to try to achieve when we shape and uh, cut out these formers. Okay, stay with me. I'll try to make this one a little more brief than the last. Thank you. Okay guys, this little model has oh, a lot of flights on it. You can probably tell by looking at it, it's sort of war weary but it's been a real hoot to fly and the zero that we're making in this series is going to be constructed uh, just like this was. Let me remove this hatch now and I'll show you inside at some of the formers and what they're going to look like when we cut out our templates to cut the foam to make them look like this. Okay, I've just removed the hatch and the the hatch is merely uh, a cutout. We're going to do the, uh, the templates for this cutout. And then it's lined with balsa and held on by four magnets, and that's it. Looking on the inside, there's a pocket in the front, again, that we'll cut out of the, the foam. This uh, little zippy uh, 800 battery will give you about six minutes of flight. It's a two cell and works a treat. It's perfect for this size model. Looking back into the fuselage, you can see this model has both rudder and elevator. And on the zero, I think that I'm going to just eliminate the rudder. This is going to be a belly slider, just like this little P-47, so the rudder is essentially useless. This is going to be a little yank and bank airplane anyway. You can see as it goes back into the fuselage, if I can get it to focus correctly here, the uh, guides are mounted on a little blue piece of XPS back there just to hold them firmly and then they go down the hollowed out fuselage. And we'll be hollowing out the fuselage in the zero also. So. This is what we're going to do. This is a uh, fiberglass cowl, and we'll be building one of those for the Zero also. It's also held on uh, by magnets and uh, easy to do, easy to uh, remake if you have problems because you'll have a mold and you'll be able to cast as many of those as you like out of fiberglass. So let's get started now. Uh, taking the uh, fuselage formers that we've already drawn the outlines and we're going to modify them so that now we can cut out the foam segments. Okay everyone, we're back in the SketchUp workspace and as you can see, all of the uh, completed formers now are done for both EPS and XPS over here. All the further work that I'll be showing on screen will be done with the EPS over here, there are fewer of them for one reason. Uh, plus, it's just too repetitive to show everything happening to all of this since it's all the same just for the segment size. That's the only difference. So, we're going to go with this. Our original sketches that were down here, I just moved them up out of the way so that we've got a clear area down here to work. We're going to be doing some things down here and need this clear area. Before we start manipulating uh, these formers and cutting out lightning holes to, uh, to make things lighter, especially back aft, we need to come back over here to our drawing one more time. And you see the datum line. The datum line extends all the way out here. We're going to make use of that here in just a second. But when we cut out the hatch, we're going to come down here uh, to the datum line, back to about here, and then up to the back of the cockpit. But we need a floor on the inside of the model. That floor is going to be used to mount 
the receiver, the speed controller. Uh, you saw the battery pocket up here in the front. It's going to be used for things like that. And we need to drop down that floor when we cut it out. Now, there's no hard and fast rule as to uh, how far down, but in a model like this, about 10 millimeters will be just fine. So we come up here to our data line, and we're going to drop down another construction line about 10 millimeters down, hit 10, and there it is. Now, this carries out all the way over here, and that's good because we're going to use this now to start carving out holes in our templates so that we can lighten the foam. Again, we're going to move this down so we're, we have them all right here and take this. We're going to move this um, for a move. We'll take this end point and we're going to put it down here on our datum line. There we go. Alright, the end point's on the datum line. Now if you will uh, take a look Oh, let's see what we did here. For some reason, that didn't move exactly to the data line. We're going to fix that. All right, there we go. Now we're on the line. Now we see our 10 millimeter drop down here, and that will give us a, uh, a tray section on the inside when we get done. Now recall, we needed the first and second formers to be solid because we need that 20 millimeter span of solid foam up here just to make things more solid. But as we go back, we're going to hollow these out. A very easy way to do that. We're going to use, uh, again on this size model, I've found that a skin thickness, now this is the foam wall thickness of the model, of about 10 millimeters works pretty good. And there's a very easy way to do this now that we have these all as a single sketch. Select that sketch and over here on your toolbar you'll see the offset tool and what that does is allow you to select a plane like we have here click on the edge and pull in then you can type the amount of offset you want and there is your offset you have a, a uniform 10 millimeter rim around this whole thing. Now we're of course going to hollow out the center so we'll just select the center and delete it. Now we need the bottom of the uh, tray on the inside and so that's going to be represented by this line and you have to just just as I had to move all those down uh, just a tiny bit a moment ago Sometimes you have to zoom way in on SketchUp in order to make it see what you want it to snap to. So now, this is going to be the fuselage shell. Uh, the canopy will be cut out here on the data line and left it off. And we'll have this much of a floor on the inside. And we're going to continue this all the way back to the back of the cockpit. So we're going to do the same thing again. We'll zoom in here. We're going to select the offset tool, grab an edge. Whoops, here we go. We don't want that. We want to select a whole face. And yeah, don't grab an edge. Select the whole face. Get something on that face. Pull in 10, and there you are. Now we're going to come back here and modify this. As I said, I'm going to use a solid foam canopy. If you guys are going to cut this off and, and pull, say, a vacuum form clear canopy, you can do that, and this top will be gone. But in my model, we're going to have that top there. So I want some solid foam up there to work with. So when we delete the center uh, of this one, we're going to draw a couple of lines across here. And again, it's not critical where you do that, but you want it below the cockpit or below the, uh, the top of the, of the cockpit where it shows there. And we come over here, and now we've made another face, but again, we're going to get rid of that. Now we're going to do a drop another line down here to continue our floor. And we're going to come across to right here. 
and punch out the center and we're done. After punching that out, I noticed I did not draw in the floor line over here. Or evidently, I missed that. What we're going to do is come back over here and do it. There we go. Now we've got the floor line in. I must have accidentally erased it. But you see what's going to happen. Now I'm going to uh, speed this up and get these done to the back of the cockpit. And then we'll talk about the ones further on. Okay, that gets the floor of these done. Now, for the remainder of these, the only thing that's going to be running back there are our control rods for the elevator and, if you choose, the rudder. However, I have found that if... Uh, oh, and by the way, let me interrupt just one more time. Make sure you have all of these uh, tick marks transferred to the inside of this because we're going to be cutting that out and you want these marks on the inside. They're critical for alignment, guys. You've got to have these marks, and they've got to be right. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled hollowing. If we take this, come over here and do our uh, our standard. Oops, got to select it. And we're going to do our 10 millimeter. Inset. Now, if we just punch this out, I found on these size models that handling the fuselage in the back like this behind the cockpit, they tend to be kind of uh, kind of a squishy. If uh, if you're not careful, it's it's not something that you're going to have to handle like a stick and tissue model. But for very very little weight gain. We can put a crossbar back here that will help do two things. It will help not only increase the stiffness across the beam of the model, but it will also give us a floor to take all the way to the back to run our cables down if you're running uh, wire inside a tube or something like that. So again, we're going to come to our old familiar uh, T for tape tool, and this time we're only going to, we're, we're only going to come up about six millimeters. We don't need much across here at all and it'll make a tremendous amount of difference and add very very little weight. So now we'll come in here we will be we'll be on uh, the the datum line and as you can see SketchUp likes to uh, snap to endpoints, midpoints, uh, everywhere except where you want it to snap sometimes. But if you zoom in, you can get it to snap exactly where it's supposed to be. And that's what we need to do. Across here. All right, now. Come up here to the next one. As long as it says intersection, you're good. If it says endpoint, no. Okay, now we're done. Now that made another face down here that we're going to delete. So all the rest of these now are going to have this crossbar installed. Now it doesn't look like much, but it adds a tremendous amount of stiffness and hardly any weight. There is not going to be any finish on this at all in here, although there will be adhesive. So I'm going to speed things up and go the rest of the way. Okay, everyone, that is it for this episode. 
when we return, we're going to come back and finish the fuselage templates. Now that we have uh, the formers done, there are only three more that we need. One is going to be a template for the hatch that will appear in this area right here. The other is a template for the wing saddle that will allow us to cut an extremely accurate wing saddle and we will import an airfoil and I'll show you how to do that so that we can have a, uh, uh, a really uh, high-tech Michael Selig airfoil that works well with these size models. Then we're going to come back here and do something about this horizontal stabilizer. This was a little rudder-only aircraft and as you can see it's got one heck of a decollage. The, the angular difference between this and the uh, wing is just extreme, extreme and what's what that's supposed to do is make the air, airplane climb continuously. Uh, you killed the climb by knocking it into a turn with rudder only back for those of you that remember those days. But what we're going to do is we're going to line this up zero zero and show you how to do that and we'll have a template to do that too. So three more templates. Uh, the cutout for the hatch, cut out for the wing saddle, and cut out for the horizontal stabilizer. That's all to come on the next episode. Thank you for hanging in there this far, and I'll see you next time. Okay, everyone, another lengthy episode has come to a close. I bet some of you thought it would never end. Anyway, we're going to continue doing this in a conversational tone, just because I've always thought that slow and steady and illustrating each point along the way is more helpful than trying to do this at Mach 1. So we're going to keep on doing it slow. We'll be back with episode 7 and still developing templates and moving this whole process ahead another step. Thank you for hanging in there guys. See you then.